Welcome. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone, as Sarah m- m- mimics and mocks me. Oh, no, okay. I'm um, not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm this not is... mocking you. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the Is This Love <laughs> podcast. <laughs> she didn't do that. Hands in the air, flaring jazz hands. All right. <laughs> this is all behind the scenes stuff. I know, right? Hi, everyone. We're just having a good time. Welcome. It's the Halloween weekend when you listen to this. So happy spooky Halloween. Ooh, it's the end of the spooky month coming up pretty soon. Oh. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, but here we are. Look at that. We've made it. Uh, we've got our candy in tow. We've got our masks on. Sort of. Uh, <laughs> and we're ready to go. If you're wondering what this is, this is the podcast where we answer your questions. Yes, I'm pointing at Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> My questions. Your questions. Everyone's questions. And we navigate and discuss the weird and wonderful world of love and relationships. I am the spooktacular Frenzy Stein. <laughs> and with me is Spooky name. <laughs> <laughs> spooky. All right, Sarah. I mean, you're real. You're Sarah, but you're spooky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How yes. are you doing? <laughs> How are you I'm- doing? I should have said, yeah. <laughs> I'm good. I'm really getting in the Halloween spirit right now, even though we're recording this early. So it is a little bit away for us. Yeah. Yeah. There's just some. Um, channel that i watch where they try food and stuff and they'll do mm-hmm. christmas foods in like august because you know yeah. they just record ahead of time and, and they're and they mention it so yes i mean we're luckily we're in the spooky month at least when we're talking we about halloween but like doing this episode is actually really getting me in the spirit even though it's a little early i know i'm right? like oh, it feels like halloween already <laughs> now look normally we start with some you know life thing or whatever we're gonna talk halloween uh mm. for our our discussion at the beginning and why of course we would because it's halloween it's spooky time and you were talking about i don't know if it was in the last episode or not you would know you heard it recently but did we talk about music and how you didn't think there was a lot of halloween music you did have a few like monster mash and thriller yeah. and thriller and I mean, there's also like, they're not really songs, but there's like those playlists where it's just like spooky sounding. Oh, sounds. sounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. noises. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if those that's count. That's what I think of Halloween music. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if those count because that's, you know, but there are a lot of Hall- Halloween songs and music, but really this is the time for Halloween movies and Maybe even TV yes. shows. I don't know if there's Halloween TV shows. I mean, I guess um, Adam's ooh. Family and stuff like that, right? American Horror Story. Mm. That's true. American Horror Story. That's a good one. one. Yeah. I really like that. Um, I mean, some of the later seasons I went as, wasn't as big a fan of, but there's a lot of things about that show I really like. Lady Gaga was in like a lot of the later <gasps> seasons, wasn't I she? I <laughs> love that season. And a lot of people are like, that's the worst one. But you know what? No, it's one of the best. Okay. That's the I hotel so. one, isn't it? Or something? Yeah, hotel. The, the hotel one, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. One of my favorites. Yeah, no. Uh, Halloween TV shows, I think. Oh, I guess our, I was going to say are a little harder. But no, I already was thinking like there's Bates Motel, wasn't there? There was like. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that right? was creepy. <laughs> there's like a bunch of them. There's There was the Hannibal TV show for a while. So there's a lot of horror-esque. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I had to stop watching that show because it's just like, okay. So there's like an art, like super smart, artistic, artistically creative serial killer every single week, wherever they live. Like, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course there is, right? I mean, of course. But it's just like, okay, there's like so many of them. It's just, <laughs> I mean, I know it's just a TV show, so they right. have to keep having them like come on. But at some point, I was just thinking, Oh, there's just too many super creative serial killers. <laughs> well, I think of Supernatural, which had a 15 season run. That's right, yeah. And they had like a monster of the week for most of that, really. <laughs> like, you know. I mean, that, I mean, monster of the week is like, yeah. you know, that's like 
super, that is a supernatural thing, right? But it's funny to me when I watch cop shows and I'm suddenly like taken out of, or I lose the, um, suspension of disbelief because I'm like, there's so many of these really crazy crimes happening because yeah. that's the whole like structure of this show is the specific kind of crime happening. Right. And I haven't heard of even like one of these in real life, you know? <laughs> well, well, luckily we don't have to be privy to it because I think there's, you know, I mean, maybe well, there are, yeah, there's, as, yeah, there's terrible, terrible stuff that happens, but like, <laughs> it may not happen as often who... <laughs> as in C- SVU, right? Where SVU every week, you know, well, there's a one, brand like, new. That one I could kind of believe because, like, their thing was, like, just a specific kind of a very, very common crime. Right. And they did actually take a lot of their stories from the news, I think. <laughs> yeah, right Definitely. from the headlines, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm, yeah. But, I, yeah, they did – obviously, they had probably more than what is actually happening in real life <sighs> in, like, one precinct. Did, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that, which is why OG Law and Order did it for me because it wasn't just homicides all the time. It was like, oh, somebody got, you know, I mean, yes, people died, but there were, you know, a million different reasons as to why it happened, right? Versus yeah. like, oh my God, the other one was just harder to watch because it's like, oh man, it's, it was gruesome stuff. It was very uh, gruesome. Yeah. I did like it though. I, I loved, yeah. um, yeah, iced tea and, the guy who played and, Munch and yeah. Mariska Hargitay and oh, I can't remember his name, but I love him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, look, first off, just a great name to say Mariska Hargitay. Like, what a great name. Yeah. I love Mariska Hargitay. Anyway, but that's not spooky. What's spooky are, again, movies, television shows, but movies specifically. What are some yes. of your favorite horror films or spooky movies? Oh, gosh. And I was trying to think of some that were, like, kind of relationship related. Which is tough. Are there? Yeah, I was going to say, are there? Not like. <laughs> are there relationship movies? <laughs> They're kind of like the antithesis movies? of a romantic movie, so. Usually. Not so yeah. much, but one of my favorites mm-hmm. kind of is a little bit something to do with relationships. Okay. And that is It Follows. Oh, well, yeah. Well, yeah. That's the, that's the, if you have sex with me, a thing yeah. follows you. <laughs> yeah. STC, sexually transmitted curse. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did they, I haven't seen the movie. Is that what they called it? Is that really what they no, called it? No. Oh. <laughs> they should. Oh, missed opportunity. They should, oh, well, my God. Well, okay, but that would be too silly. It's not a silly movie. Oh, okay. But, yes, that is what it is. It's definitely an STC. Um, because you have to sleep with someone to get rid of it. But if that person dies, then it'll come back it comes to back you. back to you. Yeah. Yeah. So you can never know, unless you, like, keep track of the person you slept with, if it's coming back for you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is worse, the STC or teeth? Uh, uh, vagina dentata. Well, I don't mind teeth because that, you know, that's no threat to me. No, if, that's yeah, that's true. <laughs> if if it was me, if it was me, I mean, I kind of liked how she, you know, how some people got their comeuppance in that movie when they tried to mess with her. So true. I, yeah, I didn't no, hate that's it. True. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't no, hate the concept. <laughs> I don't know if this is considered horror, but it's kind of relationship based. In, yeah. in, there was a movie called Warm Bodies, where is that the it, zombie boyfriend? The zombie boyfriend that became human because of love. Aw, there were right. some zom rom coms going on for a <laughs> while. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make that up? Because I hope you made that up. No, I have heard that before. Oh, uh, you should have just said, "Yeah, that's mine." I, oh I, no, I, I take that one. Okay, I can't so take it. The zom rom com. Yeah. Although that so, might have been more of a drama movie. I can't really remember so much, but there was, oh. um, well, like, cause Shaun of the Dead was a definitely, no, was it? There was, there, there was a little bit of romance in it. Well, yeah, he wanted to get back with his girlfriend during the zombie apocalypse. So there was a little bit. Yeah, that's true. There was yeah. a little bit. <clears throat> no Richard I- Ayoade on that one, though. So no, I no. have not seen him in any zombie movies that I no. know of. I don't think he's been in zombie movies. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> there it's was another a- like zombie love story movie, kind of. Mm. Um, did you ever see Fido? No, what's Fido? Is that the, is that I a just, dog? No, that was the, I don't know if that actually was the name of the zombie, but they were referencing the zombie. And it was this movie that like took place in the fifties as if the zombie apocalypse had happened in the fifties. Mm-hmm. 
and something spread through the air so that everyone is infected with it. It's like The Walking Dead, where if you die, no matter how you die, you'll become a zombie. Right. So um, all the cities are fenced off, and it's just like regular 50s society, except for they teach kids how to shoot zombies in, in school and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, people have to pay a bunch of money for like this insurance that will – have them cut off your head and give your head a special burial when you die. Otherwise, if you don't pay for this, they just stick you outside the gate and you become a zombie. But (laughs) also zombies in this movie can have these collars put on and they become like servants. Like they become like household unpaid servants. So, you know, (laughs) indentured servitude, but they don't have any thoughts or, you know, they're, they're just like, barely smarter than regular zombies right. but this kid has a zombie pet sort of it's like his zombie with the collar or a zombie that somehow listens to him mm-hmm. and they grow a friendship together and actually the mom becomes interested in him <laughs> oh my yeah so it's um 2006 canadian movie weirdly enough okay <laughs> which I, once i saw it was canadian i'm like of course sarah likes this oh, um yeah. <laughs> Canadian. Her love of Canadians, but um, it stars uh, Carrie Ann Moss, aka Trinity from. Yeah, um, she was the mom. Mm-hmm. And uh, Fido, which this shocks me, is played by famous Scottish comedian Billy Connolly, who probably oh. doesn't talk in this movie because he's a zombie. But Billy Connolly, <laughs> he has a very, you know, he's a very, you know, uh, like. Ah, voice. You know, he's very scratchy, very Scottish. Yeah. But, oh my goodness, it has a... I mean, those two alone make it an amazing cast. Because, A, I love uh, Carrie Ann Moss, and B, I love uh, Billy Connolly. So, yeah, that's amazing. I, th- I think it's... I think it's kind of like a hidden gem, in my opinion. It is. I, I, I've seen the poster... Um, but I've never watched the movie, but now I have to because it has two people of whom I think are great, are great. So I need to watch it now. So <laughs> I may have to, I may just have to do that. That's cool. That's yeah. Awesome. I really liked it back when it was, um, when it was newish. I watched it a few times. I really liked it. 2006. Crazy. Uh, yeah. No. Um, I like <laughs> now. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Now I need to look up, I'm going to look this up, romantic horror movies. Because now I need to know if there are romantic horror movies, because, you know, you you brought it up. Okay, so here are the best horror romance movies as ranked by MovieWeb as of June 13th, 2022. So that's amazing that it's it's that. Oh, you got one of them. Which, yeah. Oh, you saw? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So Warm Bodies is number three out of eight. In this one, uh, number eight is Jennifer's Body, which I didn't know Jennifer's Body was a horror movie. Oh, God. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen it, but I've seen the trailers and stuff. It looks, well, people said it wasn't very good, but it does look yeah. quite scary to me, but just from the trailer. <laughs> right. Like, I, I get, it's a, I, well, Megan Fox is a blood sucking demon, apparently. So there you go. Uh, Crimson Peak is another one. Uh, which I've heard of. Chinese ghost story, which, um, sure, why not? <laughs> like, okay. Have you heard of all these? Uh, Crimson Peak, I've heard of. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Okay. <clears throat> Sarah, you have homework. So in Bram Stoker's Drac, uh, Bram Stoker's, I keep saying Stoker's, Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> yeah. It has Keanu Reeves as the main kind of protagonist. Oh, right. And he does a British accent in this movie. Oh, no. And it is awful. Like, oh, it goodness. is considered the most te- – but but it has, you know, um, Gary Oldman <laughs> as Dracula, so it, and it has, like, Winona oh. Ryder as, a, as um, I guess, one of the love interests. But you need to listen to Keanu Reeves. You need to, re- you need to look up Keanu Reeves speaking – British in this movie. Oh gosh. And you will yeah. <laughs> you will laugh so hard. It is so Aww, bad. <laughs> poor Keanu. Poor Keanu. But, <laughs> but it's it's during Keanu's like, I am an FBI agent. 
oh, Bill S. Preston Esquire. You know, like that's it. You know, it's during that time where he's very, you know, you know, surfer guy. Yeah. And he's like, oh, doth, why doth thou, uh, try to bite with me, uh, Dracula? Right? Like, oh, he's no. just, oh, my, it's, oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Um, oh, okay. I'll have to listen to that. Yeah, you need to listen to it. Uh, Thirst is a Korean film I've never heard of. Warm Bodies, I mentioned. The Odd Family Zombie on Sale, another Asian film. I think Asian films seem to be working really well. Another Korean film, actually. So they seem to be doing really... A friend of mine who loves Korean movies, apparently they make the best heartbreak movies and the best romantic films. So. Oh, if you do, if you do the subtitles, apparently go for it because they they. they oh, I can definitely do subtitles. I think yeah. Asian horror movies are often like so good at being <laughs> so scary that like they're just I can't like I'm like I'm fascinated by them and reading the plot and like yeah. seeing reviewers do them, but I know they would be too scary for me to watch because just, <laughs> they're so good at like the faces, like the makeup and yeah. the creepy in the shadows, the person's there and you just notice and all that stuff that like <laughs> just makes my blood run cold. Well, yeah, like OG Ring or in Japan, Ringu, apparently yeah, way better just, than The Ring, right? I did actually see that one and that one, um, both The Ring and Ringu, I liked. I thought they were both scary, but yeah. there's other movies that were made in like – um Japanese or Korean filmmakers and I've only been able to watch the reviewers because I'm like <laughs> I wouldn't be able to sleep for months I know if I watched this there was so most things don't scare me that much I think the first movie that really kind of freaked me out just because I thought it was real was the Blair Witch Project yeah <laughs> because they they marketed it as like this actually happened this is found footage look at the people they're dead and then they did tours like and i used to do i was doing research i remember vividly using 90s internet doing research <laughs> on the blair witch project i'm like oh i got I, is it real is it and there were like articles and there were like all these things so they really sold it as like this happened yeah. and then they did the tour and then they did the press tour i'm like wait a minute they're supposed to be dead. <laughs> right. And I'm like, oh, oh. But I saw them when I – it didn't matter though. I saw the movie and I couldn't sleep for like a week because I'm just like, oh, there's going to be rocks, a pile of rocks outside my bedroom and there's going to be like hanging – oh, it was terrible. Yeah, yeah, that one freaked people out. The ring really freaked me out like that. Like I knew it was a fake movie, but I was freaked out seven days after I saw it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, luckily – if I watch the ring now, it's like VHS tape. Like I can find a V, like I can VCR. <laughs> <laughs> I win because I can't find a VCR. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk around all proud of myself because I can't watch old TV. But yeah, no, um, yeah. So that that those are pretty big. The one that's really big now because the sequel just recently came out is Hocus Pocus. I still haven't seen it. God, but I have heard bad reviews, which makes me sad. For the, oh, you mean the sequel? Yeah, for the yeah, sequel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the first one's amazing. But yeah, the sequel, haven't been hearing great things, but I feel like I have to watch it anyways, or at least yeah. try. I mean, look, it's watch it in the background while you're doing stuff, you know, just have it like playing in the background. You don't need to, I don't think you need to pay too much attention. From what I can tell, just based off the trailer, I mean, they look good still. Like, Bette Midler still looks great, and Sarah Michelle, uh, Sarah Michelle Kelly, that's, no, that's not her. Sarah, Jessica Parker, Jessica Parker. Still, <laughs> still doing well. And I wish I could remember the third actress, but they, they all look great. Like, they all look, yeah, like, I think they look good. Yeah. Um, and the, the trailer had me interested, but it's yeah. just the things people are saying. I'm kind of like, ah. Oh. What, what, what do you expect though, right? Like, I you don't know. know. I have high mm. expectations. Mm. I, it's a movie of its time. It really, it, it's, it's such a movie of its time, right? Yeah, that's true. It really is. How many, I mean, you know, Virgin 20 times said in the movie, like, you can't say that. <laughs> you can't do that nowadays. <laughs> can't, can't be making fun I don't, of the what virgins. What do they call it? Just the regular black flame candle? I don't, <laughs> oh, wait, that, that is what it was called. No, it was a virgin had to light the black flame candles. Never mind. It wasn't to, called yeah. the virgin black flame candle. No, not candle. the virgin. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, 
Oh, yeah. never mind. <laughs> so, yeah, no, but I mean, look, I, I, we kind of talked off the air of like horror films. Even, I even tried to convince you to watch footage of the game PT, right? Um, <laughs> I don't know if I can do it. Uh, there was a, there was another game that used to, it was called Fatal Frame. And it was a Japanese, it was a game set in Japan where your only weapon was a camera and you had to take pictures of ghosts to fight them in a, in a ghost town. That game, mm-hmm. I couldn't, that game scared the hell out of me. I couldn't sleep after playing that game because you just, it felt very atmospheric, felt very real. You just see like little, especially kid ghosts. Oh, I hate Oof. kid ghosts. Kid ghosts are the worst. <laughs> kid, kid, <laughs> Oh, they're just, this is the worst because it's like, oh man, you're dead as kid. Oh, um, so yeah, <laughs> no, even though, um, oh my God, there's that new movie called M- Megan. Have you seen the trailer for Megan or M3 Gen? No. What is it? So <sighs> it's about a, it's like, you know, Annabelle. Oh, the doll. Yeah. This one's kind of a modern. It's the same people, but now it's a robot, like a robot humanoid oh. doll, and it's creepy I, looking. Yeah, but what people love about it is like it does it like it dances like halfway through the trailer, and it's just really weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if it's creepy or not. I mean, it's creepy ish because it's you know it's I'm your it's like my buddy or. It was the female oh, the Chucky doll, yeah. Yeah, it's like a Chucky doll-ish sort of, yeah. 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 I don't know. The doll thing, doll horror movies don't really do it for me. I did, me and my sister watched like all the Chucky movies because we thought they were hilarious, but that was like <gasps> horror comedy almost. Yeah, I was going to say, like Chucky, I think was intentionally funny, right? Yeah. Like it's meant to be hilarious, right? Because he freaking impregnates, what's her face? <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Tilly. Yeah, yeah, Jennifer Tilly and has a child with Jennifer Tilly. Oh, that like, was hilarious. Like, okay. <clears throat> so, you know, you, you kind of have to take that with a grain, you know, not a grain of salt, but you have to take those films as comedies. But yeah. Yeah, the whole like evil doll family. <laughs> so, uh, I loved it. Before we get into the questions, do you have one favorite all time? This is the thing that makes me either, it doesn't have to be a sk- like, it just has to be Halloween related. Like, do you have a favorite Halloween related film? Halloween related film or at least or scary movie actually cuz uh, technically I'm still going to say yeah. I think the one I recommend to everybody mm. who hasn't seen it is still it follows I think that's one of my top mm. yeah. yeah I think it's just like it's just perfect a concept for a scary movie it's just a nightmare you would have yeah. and I think the guy who wrote it said it was exactly a nightmare he had basically it's just exactly the kind of terror and tension you would feel in the kind of thing your brain would come up with to scare you, you know? Something yeah. is always following you and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um I I mean if I were to pick a favorite, I guess it would be Shaun of the Dead, because that's to me, I like a good comedy. That's and a, a good one, a, and yeah. And a good horror comedy is great, but you know, there's just so many I mean, horror is such a huge, you know, uh, a deal. Um there was, uh, you know, like Cabin in the Woods and like, um, Ooh, that's a really, okay. That's like, that's definitely one of my tops. Yeah. Too right. is Cabin in the Woods. That's a really good one. Obviously everybody's seen it now. So there's like, oh, nobody yeah, that, who needs to be recommended it. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. It was when it came out, it was really everyone's like, uh, the word of mouth of it was just like, everyone needs to watch this film. So, uh, uh, that may, definitely made the rounds, but there's a, Evil Dead is another one. Like there's a lot of films yeah. out there. Yeah. I actually really liked the the remake of Evil Dead they made too. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't mm-hmm. Sam Raimi, I don't think, but they did. And it was much scarier and like darker. It wasn't funny, but yeah, they did do some like little sort of like uh, nods to yes. the style of the original and some of the stuff that was a little bit humorous in that way. And it was just yeah. a little bit over the top. So I did really like the new one, even though it is way creepier and mm-hmm. like less funny than the originals. Yeah, I, I'm not a big horror fan, but if it's over the top kind of horror where it's just like kind of ridiculous, I'm all for it. Like I'm a fan of like just over, as long as it's not gore porn, I'm usually pretty good about it. Like, oh, this is I fun. Mean, it was just like a little bit over the top, like, cause you're like watching certain scenes and you're like, how is he still standing? He just like yeah. 
how does he still have any blood left in his body? You know, like after what just happened. So I, yeah, yeah. I, I watched something recently where it's just like the sheer amount of blood that they used in this movie is so stupid, but I can't remember it right now. I don't remember. What I feel it was. like not about that movie. There's a scene yeah. where literally everything is covered in blood. Everything, what? and they're outside, and everything is drenched in it. The whole scene is red. Well, <clears throat> there you go. Drenched and red and bloody. <laughs> yeah, it's good Halloween stuff. Good Halloween stuff. All right. Well, look, this show doesn't exist without questions, and your questions are all we care about. So go to isthislovepawn at gmail.com. Isthislovepawn on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook if you want to send your questions. We have a few right now as we enter. The question segment. (laughs) (laughs) Is this love questions? Okay. So our first question is, I'm really uncomfortable with my boyfriend's best friend. They talk every day, calls and or texts. I feel like she acts flirty with him, but he says that's just her personality. I also think she relies on him for help and support more than any of her other friends, like the stuff you'd want a boyfriend to do. And she's weird to me. She kind of rolls her eyes when I talk sometimes and gives me some of the cold shoulder. He thinks I'm imagining some of her behavior towards me and that their friendship is normal. I don't want to act insecure and ask him to break up a friendship, but what else can I do? (laughs) (laughs) What? What? You thinking Relation- of something specific? Relationships are weird. Yeah. Um, relationships are weird. I uh, I was uh was it TikTok or Instagram? There's this guy who's like six foot six, six foot seven. And he's yeah. like, This is wow. my best friend. And she's like four foot eleven, right? Mm-hmm. And the I'm like well, the way that they kind of handle each other and kind of play around, they must be a couple, right? So I dig into his Instagram. He has a girlfriend that is not her, <laughs> despite oh, the wow. fact that he's kind of handsy with this girl. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, oh, he has a girlfriend. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> yeah. he has a best friend of whom he, like, is very comfortable with, you know, mm. and of whom – like is in a lot of his videos. I was just thinking that, huh? I mean, that girlfriend seems cool, I guess, but like, that's, that's a hard, that's a hard bout. That's a hard thing to balance. So Mm -hmm. Sarah or spooky. I'm sorry. Spooky. (laughs) (laughs) Have you ever been jealous of your boyfriend's female friends? You know, sometimes it's been a little bit weird for me when they're like friends with their exes. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. Um, just depending on the situation. So usually it's fine if we talk about it, you know? Okay. But I've never been in a situation where like the, the friend was hostile to me or like flirting with him Mm -hmm. because usually that's like a boundary for me i'm i'm like okay i feel a little bit weird about this but as long as you say that they're not like flirting with you and you know we can all hang out together sometime Mm -hmm. then you know i I feel better about that but if it's like she's being weird to me and hitting on him that would definitely not feel right to me and maybe like with that online couple maybe it's not a big deal for everybody, but mm-hmm. you know, I think this person, I think what you should do is really think about how important this boundary is to you and like how, you know, like how strong of a, th- a thing this is for you. And for me, I think it's perfectly reasonable to not want your partner to like prioritize or spend a lot of time with a friend who's hostile towards you and right. flirting with him. <clears throat> Um, as far as being insecure about it, I actually think it's much more secure to stick by your boundaries and respect yourself. I think it's more insecure to say, well, I will put up with being unhappy and feeling like my boyfriend's friend is disrespecting our relationship as long as I, you know, I can hold on to him somehow and he won't get away from me because I'm asking for too much, you know? So, So, 
but this is her boyfriend's best friend. In other words, they are, they may probably knew each other before the relationship started, my guess. Um, honestly, like to me, that I would, okay. So this is why I say like, think about your boundaries because it's perfectly fine to say, I don't want to be in a relationship where my partner, I feel like I'm in competition with my partner's friend and they clearly like my partner. They clearly want to be with them and resent me for being with them. It, it's perfectly fine to say, I don't want to be in that relationship. And it's also okay for him to say, well, I don't want to give up this friendship, which is why you have to think about your boundary saying mm-hmm. if it's, if he's not going to agree to this, am I going to cave or am I going to say, no, I'm going to find somebody who understands why that bothers me and our relationship won't have that in it. So both of you can say, I don't want to budge on this and that's right. fine. Then you're just not compatible in my opinion. Even, even with his, his kind of argument is, is like, I'm not, I'm guessing his argument is because it doesn't, it doesn't say here. Well, it's it sounds like he kind of just dismisses it and is like, no, you're, right. she's not really that way towards you. And it's fine because the way I act with her is how a, both, that's fine yeah. for a friendship. But I, I guess the thing I was looking for was he doesn't say, oh, I'm not, doesn't, I'm not even, I've never been interested in her in that way anyway, or I've never really thought of her in that way anyway. Like, you know, to me, she's like another guy or something, even though I, I don't know, maybe not necessarily to that extent, but like, you know, she's not someone I would ever want to be with anyway. Um, yeah. And here's the thing about that. Like, to me, mm. I think it, an issue comes up for me with my partner's friends mm-hmm. or for my friend. I, and I would totally understand the same thing if they had a pro- problem with my friends for them. Mm-hmm. If we're, if our friends are like making it clear that they want more than friendship. Right. To me, that's like you're keeping someone who it, who, is sort of disrespecting the relationship who like wants the relationship to end so they can have you Mm -hmm. in our lives. And like, you don't want to give up that attention. So you're saying, well, I'm not going to do anything. So it's fine for me to keep them around. And it just creates a lot of stress for that other person. You just don't really care. You're like, well, I I like what I'm getting from it more than how much distress it's causing you. So I would say, talk to your friend and be like, look, if, if we can't have a friendship where you're not hitting on me, then it's not going to work. Right. Now here's a here's a weird question cuz I'm I don't know how this would play. But mm-hmm. like for instance, I had I think I've mentioned this before. I had friends where I couldn't feel like they would necessarily meld well together. So I had different groups of friends of whom I would spend time with separately and never kind mm-hmm. of the neither the two shall ever meet because I know that there'd be tensions. Right. Mm-hmm. Not, not because of anything malicious, but like these are the nerds and these are the jocks, right? They, they just don't have compatible interests that from what I could tell. And I, I, I hope to think I'm good at reading people, but I'm like, I, I easily go with the flow with people and like, okay, well, these guys are really over the top in the sense of like, they're very energetic, very out there, very extrovert. And these guys are very quiet really like their kind of space, really like mm-hmm. it to be. And so I never put them together because that would be just uncomfortable, at least for one of the groups, right? Right. Now, I'm not saying this is a solution. I'm just throwing it out there because I'm, I want, I'm just asking the question. But what if <laughs> the boyfriend just kept the, the, the two worlds separate? Um, would that be an issue of which, again, there's – there's that reassurance that he's not particularly interested in anything, but he does appreciate like, Oh, we've been friends since we were kids or whatever. Like there's some kind of weird connection that he's willing to like not give up for whatever reason. And then just keep that, even though he, and he knows that there's the tension. It's like, but I know you guys don't get along. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how you would feel about that personally. I'm just, but I'm curious. Well, you know, I'm not saying that there aren't people who would say, fine, you can be friends with her. I just don't ever want to see her. Right. Maybe there are people who like that. But for me personally, yeah. no, I don't want to have in my relationship, my boyfriend like, well, I have this, I have this friend. She doesn't like you because she really likes me. You know, maybe he doesn't recognize that, but I know it. And he's like, right, so right, how about right, this? Right. I just, I'll just keep you two separate so I can still have her, you know, 
and I can have the best of both worlds. And right. like, we'll, I'll split up my, like, you know, like basically my, my heart between you two is kind of what's I mean, happening because she's not just like, it's not like they just don't have a lot of common interests. So mm-hmm. she's like, Hey, she's your friend. Cool. I don't like doing the same things you guys do. So you guys go do that. That's fine. Mm-hmm. She like is kind of rude to her and right. she wants her boyfriend. It's pretty clear to me. I feel like that's so disrespectful. And I feel like if you have mm-hmm. a friend who's disrespecting your relationship and disrespecting your significant other, I just don't see mm-hmm. any way for me that I would be okay reconciling that. Like, okay, we'll just hang out with her a bun- bunch and don't tell me about it. That, that wouldn't sit right with me personally. No, no, I understand that. that well, that's why I'm asking because, because from what it sounds then to me is this best friend, because he'll, I don't think there'll ever be a point where this guy can have a girlfriend and this best friend. Right. It like, could be the case. Yeah. Right. Like it does. It, it, if the best friend is doing these, it, 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 I mean, who knows? Maybe she'll like somebody at some point. I don't know. Maybe they'll become best friends with, maybe she'll become best friends with the girl, with his uh, next girlfriend. I don't know. But, you know, if, if it is the case that he is, or she is, I'm sorry, interested in him. And therefore, that's why she's kind of venomous towards the, any girlfriend or whatever girlfriends he has. Then, yeah, yeah, like in a perfect world, or I guess if he ever decides to want to have a relationship, he can't have the best friend. Like he can't have this person in his life now. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think you can't really have someone hovering around you who mm-hmm. wants you and is resentful of anyone you date if you want to have successful relationships. Mm-hmm. I think if I had like a guy friend who was constantly asking me out or like constantly hitting on me and putting down all of my boyfriends, it, it's tough. It would be tough to like say, you know, you can't do that or we can't be friends. I know because it's hard to like tell your friend, Hey, I might have to let you go, but right. you also have to kind of think about prioritizing and respecting your significant other, you know? So in other words, the advice that you would give in this particular case where she's, her question was, I don't want to act insecure and ask him to break up the friendship. What else can I do? There isn't a choice. He has to break up the friendship. No, I, I, my, what I would say to do is, um, well, research, like really (laughs) respectful and clear methods of communication first, because you want to have like this one big talk. (laughs) You want to make sure you're heard. You want to make sure you know what to do if he starts to deflect or distract or Mm -hmm. dismiss what you're saying and ways to pull it back into the conversation without getting out of control, because you want this to go as well as you can. Right, Um, Right. And just like lay it out. And then I wouldn't say make it controlling or an ultimatum when you state your boundary. Just be like, you know, I don't want to tell you what to do. I just need you to know that I have a problem with this. This makes me really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm in competition with her and I feel like she knows it too. And I, I feel like I, your friend is hostile towards me and she wants to be with you. And I, I don't feel secure knowing that she's always going to want us to not be together and she's one of your best friends right yeah i mean yeah that's tough i mean it's a lose-lose scenario in my case i went through something similar to this i had a very close friend who was female and my uh girlfriend at the time was like no get rid of her (laughs) and i'm like okay (laughs) so i got rid of my one of my closest friends who i've known forever um even though i she wasn't actively doing what any of the, what this person was doing. Right. But, mm-hmm. you know, my girlfriend at the time felt very insecure about having this fairly large female presence in my life of whom I was again, very close to, um, whom I, you know, after the fact I learned was like, she was kind of one of the, she was a girl that I was like in love with in high school, you know, but in college we're like, well, we're friends now, right? Cause obviously nothing's ever going to happen. You've, you've rejected me all of my life. Mm-hmm. And then I found out much later in life is like, I wish I didn't. I was this, then the other. I'm like, oh, well, I'm like, okay, well, that's sucks, <laughs> but whatever. So, mm-hmm. you know, but at some point, yeah, I had to 
make a choice, either be with a girl that I'm with and just lose a really good friend of whom my girlfriend did not feel comfortable with me spending time with and hanging out with and all that stuff, which I mean, you know, did I make a good decision? I don't, I don't know. Maybe not, but, or maybe I did. Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's hard to say because, like I said, it wasn't like she was actively trying to pursue me or anything. But also, right? Like, I mean, yeah, it's tough because it's, and that's the thing with boundaries is they're different for everybody. So you right. have to figure out what yours is. I'm just saying, I think her boundary is reasonable based on what she's describing of this friend. Yeah. Um, some people say yeah. you can't have any friends of the opposite gender. I think that's, that's way too far of a boundary for me. I'm fine with them having friends of the opposite gender. If I'm worried that there's some history there, I might right. be like, you know, can we talk about that? Can you explain to me the nature of that? And like, can you not, not tell me when you guys hang out? You know, things like that. <laughs> like, don't like right. keep things from me and like, just, it would be cool too if we could all hang out sometime and I could like meet them, but I don't need you to not be friends with them if, it, if there's nothing going on and it's right. platonic now, that's okay. But if there's any kind of from either direction, any kind of will they, won't they energy? No, I'm not okay with that. That's not yeah. to me. That's not a platonic friendship. I'm okay with you having platonic friends. I'm not okay with some other bits of romance coming into our relationship that aren't you and me, you know? Oh yeah. No, look, I, I mean, if the roles were reversed, like say, you know, say, I mean, we would be the same deal, right? Like, I don't, right. I don't, I feel I would be, I wouldn't be comfortable with that either, knowing that the guy like some... hovering around your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, oh, like again, I, you know, I think of that, that I forget whatever that online dude was. I'm like, you do a lot. Like, I, if I was this guy's girlfriend. I'd be like, man, you spend a lot of time and do a lot of things with this girl. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> would whom, too. Of whom, and mind you, his, his, I think it was Instagram because his Instagram was like a lot of this best friend and not a lot of his girlfriend while the girlfriend's Instagram was a lot of the both of them. And I'm like, okay. Oh, See, that's interesting. Like that was, he, that's, yeah. You can't ever know what's going on with someone else's relationship, but that just does not look good at all to me. That sounds like a lot of trouble in paradise, at least for her. I mean, potentially, yeah. Like, maybe yeah. they've worked something out. Maybe they've come to some type of agreement where, like, this is your business partner. Because he may – he kind of – like, he's kind of – that's his brand, I guess, being super big and tall. Like, he, he sells and gives away merch based on that. Like he was, he did a giveaway of like, this is my water bottle. Look how small it is to me. And then he gives it to his little friend. Look how big it is to her. You can win this water bottle if you do this, right? Like, so I almost feel like it's a gimmick sort of, but it's still kind of weird to me. Like, I it's guess like, I, you know, it's never a good sign to me when <laughs> like a woman puts her boyfriend all over her social media and then he has other women all over his right. social media. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, usually not a, a great start to anything in my opinion i don't know everyone's don't different know. who knows yeah. i just found it interesting because again i thought the little again my, my brain went straight to that and all of a sudden i'm like oh he has a girlfriend that's surprising so anyway yeah. um but i agree yeah so like if again i i, I understand I'm, i have to ask the questions right i gotta put it out there i gotta ask those questions so yeah uh, it's different for everyone so that's yeah. that's just how i feel that's yeah. that's how, what i would do in this situation but some people maybe they don't care they're just like just don't let me ever see her i'm fine with that i I don't know anyone like that, but it could, it could happen. <laughs> she obviously does. Otherwise, she wouldn't ask the question. So That's true. Yeah. That's true. All right. What do we have next? Oh, well, before we ask the next question, right? what in the, in the spirit of spooky day, spooky <laughs> season, spooky month, uh, we've all gone trick-or-treating at some point in our lives, right? Sure. What was your favorite candy to get when you went out trick-or-treating? Um. Well, when I was a kid, I really liked chocolate, like well, I mean, Reese's <laughs> peanut butter cups. But 
I was gonna say, I know that. I mean, yeah, yeah. But was there one specific, like, oh, I got the candy that I've been wanting. Oh, this is the best. I used to like the Reese's peanut butter cups a lot, mm. but you know, for many, many years now, if you ask me, you know, my preference of candy, it's definitely been sour gummy worms w- over like really? any kind of chocolate stuff. Not gummy worms necessarily, but, but just sour, sour gummy candy. Yeah. So actually, I think like the sour rips are really good and the sour punch bites are good. But I mean, chocolate's still, you know, it's a good candy, but whenever there's like the Halloween <laughs> bowl of candy at the offices you go into, yeah. I'll definitely grab the little sour thing. Okay. Uh, I just upgraded my love of chocolate in all honesty. It used to be, you know, if I got a little Kit Kat bar, I was a happy camper because that was my preferred chocolate as a child. It was a Kit Kat yeah. bar. But now I need to have like lint and Godiva and like, oh. <laughs> like high end <laughs> chocolate now. I like right? lint. Like yeah. I can't, can't have the, you know, the Ferrero Rocher, excuse me. I can't have just oh, yeah. a, a simple, <laughs> you know, uh, Kit Kat anymore. It has to be the sophisticated candy. So that, that's kind of what I, like, I evolved to. Sour stuff though, I get it though. I, I like a good sour watermelon, like the sour watermelon candy is like, oh, my, those can be good. Yeah. Yeah. Or sour peaches or something like that. If it's the fruit flavor, like, I'm I all feel for it. like those aren't quite sour enough. Like the sour peaches. <laughs> They're, they have a good taste. They yeah. do have a good taste, but. I like the crazy sour stuff, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, I just want the bite. I don't want to be, like, crying and, like, my lips all just, like, <laughs> puckered the entire time. Oh, and yeah, I, I will, like, burn a hole in my tongue with, like, some of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't need, yeah, I don't need, like, a, like my stomach to hate every ounce of my body because the acids are eating away at at it from the lining, you know, because I've eaten yeah. too much sour stuff. But <laughs> I get you, I get you, you know, sour. Yeah. It's, it can be too much for, for my, for my mouth and like, yeah, burning it up, but it's so tasty. I was going to say something, ask something dirty, but let's move on to the next question. Oh let's my go God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next question is a short one. Yeah. What are some of the biggest lessons you've learned from failed relationships? A short question, but a big answer. Well, yeah. Uh, wow. Biggest lessons, you know. It's funny. Uh, we hope you learn something, right? We hope you learn I think, anything I, from a failed relationship. I think right? everyone has to be learning something from oh, no. each relationship, right? There's no? a reason why people marry eight times, right? Like, there's a reason why people, well, you know. There might be things about yourself that you're kind of blind to. But right, right, <laughs> right. You no, might like I, learn things about what you what you don't like from a partner, maybe. Maybe, you know. I think of the people who, uh, you know, you hear it all the time, right? It's kind of a meme now, or it's kind of a, a cliche or a trope where women and men, I guess, have like, oh, why do I always date the assholes, or why do I always date the jerks, right? For the women mm-hmm. and girl guys are like, well, why do I always hate the a date the cheating, you know, the, or whatever, or whatever. Like, you know, the, the, yeah. the, there's like this cycle that they happen to seem to, fi- to find themselves in. They're in this, um, it's very true. This hamster wheel of like, oh, I'm going to date, like, yeah, that, that last one, never again. And then they date someone exactly the same <laughs> as the last person that they were yeah. with. And it's like, oh, well, no lesson learned there, but, um, I don't know. What like have they have you have lo- a type. It's not, I don't think it's a type though. I think, I think oftentimes in those scenarios, because look, don't get me wrong. I think people with those types of personality types where the guy is a jerk and the, the woman's kind of, oh, I don't know, kind of all over the place. I don't know what to call them really, really, but like, you know, the, the, whatever the stereotype is are often really charismatic. And often there's like something about them that really kind of connects yeah. you anyway. Right? Yeah. Like, usually people like that's their type is like someone who like really flashes them with their attractiveness and their like, you know, passion and stuff. And there's yeah. a downside to that. And they're like, why do I always end up with this person? Not, not, not that attractive, passionate people are always that way. No, <laughs> no, no. It's not yeah. always the case, uh, but yeah. you know, yeah. there's other like, there's other personality things you can look out for where. If you're really looking at it, you're like, okay, that was really exciting, but yeah. 
maybe that was a little too fast or maybe when they said that it made me feel kind of a little bit weird, but I just sort of brushed it off and, you know, they kind of look past a lot of the stuff that's signs for what's to come. Yeah. And they just look at the personality traits that are very shiny at first. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, you know, his, uh, his winning smile and her winning cleavage. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know you're right. It's it's not just if you're attractive and nice and fun, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. <laughs> He's automatically just a jerk. But there, so, you know, there are personality traits that go together a lot of times, like with yeah. um things that can seem really exciting or great come across or come along with like maybe certain insecurities or you know control issues or something there can be patterns that's true yeah yeah i mean it's not you know it, it's not the rule but there can be the obvious yeah ask any therapist and psychologist they'll tell you there can be patterns for for certain yeah. behaviors but you know um when it comes to lessons learned my goodness i don't know uh what what have you learned from your failed relationships well, I feel like I'm having an ever growing list of red flags. <laughs> so, oh, how, all... how apropos when we talk about that later. <laughs> yes, yes. But, um, so I feel like after every relationship, I have another one to add to the bunch. And mm -hmm. sometimes they're really obvious. And I'm like, of course, that's a red flag. Why didn't I just pay attention to that? And sometimes right. they're not as obvious. And I'm like, well, that was you know, maybe a precursor to things being a little bit unstable, mm -hmm. you know, later in the relationship. So that it's not necessarily something that I definitely would say is going to happen, but it right. might be something to look out for if I see it again. Yeah. I think something else I've learned and I keep learning and it's really <laughs> hard lesson to implement. Yeah, is sure. Your, your instincts are usually correct. Oh, your yeah. intuition, yeah. your gut feeling is usually right. Yeah. And it's just so hard to listen to until like hindsight when you're saying, God, even in the very beginning, I had that little voice saying, you know, yeah. is that what maybe this means? <laughs> so yeah. it's hard to listen to, it's hard to <laughs> act on it because you just, you're like, but this feels so good. And I like this person so much. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. We're hopeful, right? Like we're hopeful that it'll turn out well and we're hopeful that our gut is wrong right like we 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 really do kind of hold on to the idea that well you know i i can't i don't have 100% perfect radar so you never know like i could be totally wrong about exactly. this whole situation yeah and that's the thing with some of the red flags it's like okay well it it maybe meant that it maybe foreshadowed this in this situation yeah. but it doesn't necessarily mean it's always that way you know i i don't want to just like always say that this is definitely a bad thing because what if it's not someday you know but it's yeah your gut instinct also kind of tells you you know this feels weird and i think as a species for the most part nice and stable people are kind of boring and that's why we kind of stay away from them Maybe, <laughs> because yeah. oftentimes those table people are rather dull they they don't have a lot going on in life. That's why they're stable. That's why they're fine, right? Then you're not going to find a lot of drama and a lot of issues with these people because they don't allow a lot of that stuff into their lives. And so they live kind of really, I'm not saying this is for everybody, but I think, I think part of us can either assume that or can see it. And it's like, oh, well, I guess this, so. Yeah. I mean, I've been with people where I really thought they were nice and stable and not even just nice, but I thought like they were, yeah. well, yeah, I thought they were like, they had good characteristics and they were stable. And I just, um, either one or the other was just a really, I don't want to say a good act, but you know, like when you're putting your best foot forward in the beginning of a relationship, right? that's just really how they came across. And I would not have guessed that they really weren't that nice or that yeah. they actually hadn't really figured out their life yet. Um, and, you know, we're going to want something totally different and it just, you know, yeah. well, so yeah. I don't know. It's sometimes it's really hard. Like you think you did find someone nice and stable 
And you might even be like, I'm okay that it's boring. But then <laughs> it turns out they're like, ah, I'm actually not like that at all. <laughs> yeah, but there must, it must have been a hint of some of that adventure, some of that bad boyness or something in there. Bad boyness. Uh, there had it been, right? There had to have been a little bit of it. I can't. Well, because like, okay, so like I dated someone and he really wasn't that nice, right? But yeah. of course he was really nice to me in the beginning. Right. So yeah, sometimes you do go look back and you're like, huh. Hindsight definitely is twenty twenty. Yeah. But like I think of a friend of mine who is just in awe that she found someone of whom she can settle down with, potentially, right? Like she's really in a new situation where most of her relationships were pretty bad, pretty unstable, pretty toxic. And she found someone of whom Everyone around this person was like singing this guy's praises, right? Same thing with yeah. this girl, this woman too. Like all of her friends would sing her praises because she's, you know, they're both genuinely nice people and genuinely good folk. They just happen to pick people who suck, right? Until yeah. now, until now. And they, which, which I hate knowing their relationship exists because it gives me hope and I don't like that. <clears throat> Cause it oh, me, come on. Because <laughs> it gives me hope that maybe I'll find something like that. Because that's really, it's a really nice and seems very healthy and very, like, that's, seems yeah, again, that's great. just based on my observations. Like, this is very healthy and very good. Like, this person, if anyone ever deserved a relationship this good, it was this person, right? Like, cause I, I've known them for, I've known them for so long that I'm like, oh, good. Thank God they have a regular real relationship because, yeah. oh, man. <laughs> but, you know, it's cool to see that. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, that means that there's hope for, you know, there's hope out there that I'll find one, you'll find one, right? Well, we'll find these things, right? Um, So what I've learned from like my own failed relationships is that you can do everything right and still fail, mm. right? Like you can still do the best that you possibly can in a relationship. And, and yet for some reason it just doesn't work out now, yeah. mind you with the ex-wife, it's a whole, that, I mean, that's pretty rough, but like, you know, I just, I, I mean, you know, my most recent relationship I ended in, in just, it's the circumstances, right? Like it's, yeah. it's just circumstances that unfortunately I personally could not go over. It was a, it was a boundary. It was a hurdle that I couldn't jump. Right. And so mm -hmm. it just became difficult for me personally. And therefore the relationship in my mind failed. Right. Uh, and then I've had, I've only had a couple other relationships. I mean, I haven't had that many. And yeah. each one, it was just like, yeah, we did the best and, you know, we found out we were incompatible. I think, you know, it's weird. I've only had one that, that kind of ended really, really badly. And I'm kind of glad because it was the worst. Like it was the, it was the right. worst possible bad, but everything else was kind of like, okay, well, we don't, we don't mesh or it's not that great. Okay. Well, or whatever, whatever reason. And it, it just doesn't, you know, it's just not going to work out. So that thing, that's the biggest lesson is, is that. And, and hopefully we'll, you know, like Sarah and I will find our, like my friend where we'll just find somebody whom, of whom like, oh, clicks make sense. Right. And at yeah. some point, and you know, at some point it will. So, well, but, yeah. And you know, there's also, I don't know if you feel this way, but I also mm -hmm. feel like with a couple of my relationships, there are good things that, that were in them, you know, that I oh, yeah, would yeah, yeah. look for, I think would be nice to have in another relationship. So mm -hmm. like if I, like your friend found that really great, stable, awesome relationship, I think it would probably have some of those characteristics that I saw in like, you know, a couple of my old relationships. Not all of them had like stuff that I would want to bring forward, but a couple no. of them did. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. Um, I, and so that's another I, thing to learn from stuff is sometimes it's not all bad, you know? No, we, we find the things that we value and we find the traits that we, that are important to us, right? Like, yeah. maybe they're not this, but they're this. And it's like, that's important to me. Like, they don't have to be, I'm going to pick something super trivial, but like, they don't have to be a good cook or whatever, or they don't have to be, um, 
even more trivial. They don't have to be a good masseuse or something, right? <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Whatever the little thing is. But they're really supportive or they're, you know, or they're really um, passionate and create, you know, energetic, creative, whatever. Like you'll find things that are like, oh yeah, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it'll just. Yeah. Like maybe know. we had such a great shared sense of humor. Like I would love to find that again. Or, you know, I would, I would love to find someone who is such, such a good listener again. Yeah. All right. Um, so thanks everyone for sending questions. Let's get into our little corner here. He happens to be a right cow from the left coast. It's right cow, left coast corner. Or what's a spooky name for that? Um, uh, uh, right cow, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna do right cow, left coast <laughs> corner. Um, which apparently they're making a Twister sequel, and I, I, I said, "Look, it can't be a Twister movie without a cow flying, it, you know, in midair, uh, like towards vehicles. Then, then it's a real Twister sequel. So, right, cow, uh, you know what to do. Be in the, you can be in the Twister sequel. Just fly around, and and, and you're set. But anyway, what do we have from Mike Cow this week? Spooky week. Okay. Well, so he talks some more about the grieving process and understood. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 I know it's, he says time. The grief never ends. It just becomes less present as time moves on. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the way it goes. No, that's, I mean, that's healthy to have it like be less. Yeah. I mean, it's always going to be impactful, but it shouldn't always linger. Uh, yeah. because, and I think it's yeah. kind of a, it's a nonlinear process too. Like, oh yeah. oh yeah. So it's things, things go up and down. So, yeah. um, that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And then yeah. just kind of some thoughts on that. And that sure. I think leads into well into his question for us, which is yes. both being alone now. Do you fear dying alone? As no one listening that we know of are immortal, should we fear death or embrace our inevitable demise? Does the answer to that question impact whether an individual is compatible to date or not? Are you afraid of dying alone? Um, I just feel like I'm a little young to be afraid of that. <laughs> uh, like, I know you never know what's going to happen. Right. Um, but I, you know, when I think of dying alone, I think of being a lot older. So, me too, me too, like in your 70s, I, 80s, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I feel like I probably have some time. I'm not too <gasps> worried about it right now. <laughs> I mean, I, I do too. I, I feel like there's plenty of time, you know? Like, I, yeah. even if if I were in, like, my 50s, 60s even, I'd be like, people date in their 50s and 60s. Like, it's not a, it's not that weird yeah. uh, to do that. So I don't. You know, I, I actually do not fear it. Um, I think for everyone, no matter what their position is in life when it comes to – in relationships, I mean, like whether they're single or lost someone or whatever, um, I think that you're never really alone if you have your friends, if you have your family. Like even if I'm alone in the sense of like I don't have a, a girlfriend or a wife or something, like I'll have – people in my life still like they're not going away anytime soon so i don't even even that i'm like i'm not gonna really die alone because there's still people in my life like yeah that's true i mean there are people who are really truly alone in this world yeah. and yeah so yeah. i i you, yeah definitely like there's, there's there's people to be grateful for in your life and yeah oh yeah 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 so yeah i definitely that's a good point yeah so uh but um so yeah i don't i don't I mean, look, I I don't normally fear death. On occasion, I will for some weird reason because I'm like, oh, everything's gonna kill me, right? Like the littlest thing, like a spider bite or something. But like, it's not. Gonna, <laughs> not gonna... It was a big spider. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I mean, <clears throat> not to not to reference anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think about my inevitable demise because, like, look, I mean. Even in my condition where I have failed kidneys or whatever, it's like, yeah, you know, there's devices that'll keep me alive for a while longer. And, you know, there's 
med- medicine is really good at that. So like, so yeah, like I would date. Look, even if I was freaking seventy, I would still try. Like, and I was just single, I would still try to look for someone. Yeah. I don't. I don't see why not. Like, who cares? <laughs> I'll be totally. like in seventy, and I'd be like, "Hey, ladies, you're a, a sexy fifty-year-old. Why don't you come on over?" <laughs> Four other sexy seventy-year-olds. Right. Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Helen I mean, Mirren. whatever. At that age, it's like you're I'm not exactly. You. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, exactly. Not exactly like, a, you know, a robin the cradle if you're going after you a know fifty-year-old in your seventy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. It's like okay, <laughs> you know. I mean, look, if every if everyone looked like uh, Helen Mirren, Dame Helen Mirren, but like, yeah, let's go for it. Eighty year old, she's eighty year old. I'm like, man. Oh my this gosh. Good. This yeah. Really good. But anyway, so yeah, what else does he have? What other questions does he have? Okay, he says. Okay, this is kind of. Hmm. Mm-hmm. This is. I think this is all one question. Okay. It's a lot. So it's a lot. Here I, we go. I'm, I'm ready for it. Okay. It is written that those who are happy and content with themselves are seen by others as better and more compatible for dating. If someone is not mentally well and potentially not content in themselves, are they good dating candidates? How important is mental health in- to dating? Can an individual utilize dating to better their mental health? Are there individuals who seek others whose mental health status is diminished in order to f- fulfill a savior or healer complex? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Hmm. Man, he always ha- he always comes with the really heavy stuff. He's so good at that. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever been in a relationship or dated anyone where I was like mentally one hundred percent. Like yeah. I'm always, I'm always up and down with my depression. You know, like it. You know, it just it is what it is with that. Um. So I don't know if I've ever been 100% mentally well or better or, you know, or, or, or happy or content in myself when I went into the dating scene. Like, I don't know. Have you, have you always been 100% like super there when you went out and dating? I don't know if I've said this before on here, but I actually have OCD. So pretty much everybody I date, I, have to introduce to my special little habits and be like, look, I need to do this. And I know it doesn't make sense. I know it's illogical and I need to do it every time this happens. And I need to do it. Like I just always need to do it. And honestly, I've gotten better at it. And I, and I'm always working on my mental health and I'm always trying to reduce the amount that like my mental health stuff is affecting my life. Um, but you know, I can't really date someone who would be like, ooh, that's too weird. I can't handle that. It's, you know, and I don't feel like it's super, I don't feel like it affects the relationships really bad. It's mostly just like, I have like a set of routines I have to do and they're, they don't take a lot of time, but I have to do mm-hmm. them, you know? Yeah. So, and I'm working on it. I'm working on like cutting it, cutting it down and making it less intrusive, but you know, most guys don't seem to care. Most of the guys I date are like, yeah, that's not a big deal. And I'll even help you yeah. with those. I'll help you with those routines. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, most people don't really care that much, but I don't. Yeah, I don't see why. I, I don't see how that's a big yeah. deal. In in in. I mean, I see how it can be intrusive in a way, but I actually feel like helping would be more intrusive because don't you need to be the one to do the act? It's Doesn't actually it- really. It's actually helpful for me when I can kind of like delegate some of it because oh. I can like trust people. If I, if I can trust them, then I can trust that I did it almost better than I can trust myself. That's why I keep doing it. Cause it's almost like I can't remember that I did it or I can't trust that I remember that I did it. Oh, I know exactly. I know, I know where you're coming from. Totally. Yeah. So it helps actually if they, if they're willing to help with it. Um, I will say I have other mental health stuff that, you know, is more of a problem. Like if my anxiety gets really bad, sure. It's, you know, difficult for me to, um, stay in a really positive mood. But yeah, I've never been a hundred percent because I'm always dealing with this one thing, and yeah, so yeah, 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 I could never really date someone who's like I can only be with someone who's a hundred percent, you know. I don't, well, here's a and look, I mean, in in a perfect world, there'd be a lot of people who are hundred percent, but I think the vast majority of people are not a hundred percent. I think the vast majority of people are dealing with something, right? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, 
Like I, th- I think this idea that there are people who are happy, content, and whatever are definitely showing it because it's online. It's easy to be able to pretend to be that way online, right? Like it's easy to show off on Instagram that I'm always in a good mood and I'm always happy and only good things ever happen because I get to pick and choose what shows on my social medias, right? But yeah. I think the vast majority of those people who are quote unquote better compatible for dating aren't most of them have something that they're dealing with, something that they're it may not necessarily be uh directly mental health, but they're not definitely not I, I don't know anyone who's like one hundred percent everything's fantastic, everything works great, everything's wonderful, right? Like everyone's dealing with something. Yeah. So as for the uh the savior healer complex, I mean I that's bad to have to do that, to to have to uh, seek um relationships or people for that alone. Uh, even though, look, I'm not gonna lie, I have had like daydreams of being, a, a, you know, saving a woman's life, and they're like in love with me. But it's always a celebrity anyway, <laughs> so it doesn't really matter, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, it's like, how great would it be if I was able to save Scarlett Johansson from like a burning building? She fell in love with me. It's like, okay, well, you know, whatever. I think I, I might have known some people like this. I don't yeah. know that it's always so strictly that like they're like I want to save them like right. consciously. But I think they do like being, um, like important to their partner in that way. Yeah, I, I, I have that. I have that issue. Yeah, I, I'm yeah, very much like, like that. Yeah, they're like, oh, I like it when my partner relies on me, and when I kind of have this, this power that's really good for them, and that power is that I'm like able to handle what they're going through and be like really supportive. Yeah. It can lead to a lot of, I think, codependency. Yeah. issues um yeah. or can lead to the person being like not really able to fend be for happy themselves unless what's that fend for themselves yeah or they can't really be happy in a stable relationship because oh, yeah. they come yeah. to really want that that dynamic um and i'm i'm kind of guessing on these people because i don't really 100% know what's going on with them or their relationships that are like this but I just get this feeling. I've gotten this feeling from a couple of people, like when hearing about their relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like I don't think anyone's ever a hundred percent always on point in a relationship. But I think if you're seeking out relationships because you get something out of the other person being unhealthy, that's not super healthy. No. Yeah. I mean, cause it's, Essentially, even if it was to where they were like really good at it and they helped you, they'd soon be uninterested because they saved you and and helped you. And yeah, what happens you. if you get better? Yeah. Can you not get better because that will ruin the relationship? Exactly. So that that type of dynamic can definitely be uh, problematic. Again, the expectation is is that you're fairly self. Sustained, self reliable. What is it? Self self sufficient. <laughs> sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like you can take care of yourself, and you don't really, you know, you're not looking for someone to lift you up, but to compliment you, right? Like you're not looking for someone to be your, you know, your sa- savior slash healer. You're looking for someone who, again, just like, oh, well, we we're a good team. But they're, I don't rely on them to be in a good, be, be in a good place type of deal. And yeah, hopefully you're not with like, someone who wants that either. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's an interesting dynamic. I think most people like to be with someone who generally wants to be happy. Like even when I'm going through a tough time, I want to get better. You yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, I don't want yeah. to like make the people around me have to like be brought down by what I'm going through. And I I love that they're supportive of me and they don't like rush me through anything, but I'm like, I want to get better. I want to stop, you know, whoever's helping me out from like having to just do that, like put so much energy into that. And I want to be happy and enjoy life with people again. So I think it's good to have the goal to be happy. So even when you do have mental health problems, you still are always wanting to go back to that if you can um, I, I think it's, I think another issue that happens sometimes is people are unhappy as a baseline and they're oh, only yeah. happy when they 
get into a new relationship that makes them really happy. Yeah. So they kind of have this, their partner has this wrong impression of them and they have this wrong impression of what happiness is. Yeah. And then when that sparkliness ends, <laughs> you know, then everyone's sad. <laughs> yeah. We don't want that. No, no. So. <laughs> no we're sad. Um, so I don't know. There you go. Uh, I, we, we feel that no, do not, uh, uh, there are people who seek that stuff, but do not go towards them. <laughs> they, they're not necessarily, I mean, their, their intentions are good, but it could, it could lead to trouble. It could. And if you're unhappy, don't try to fix it with a relationship. Yeah. Like work on happiness within yourself and being single. And then a relationship has a much higher chance of being successful. Yeah. Now look, I mean, Dating can, imp- I mean, dating has unintentionally not again. Don't seek dating if you're like using it just to fix your mental health. But like, if you happen to find yourself in a situation where you're dating, like you happen to meet someone at a coffee shop or something, and you guys hit it off, and you're like, oh, we're dating now, and that happens to improve your mental health. Well, okay, you know that's a side effect, but don't oh, seek yeah. it out. Well, yeah, don't 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 actively yeah. seek it up. Like, well, this is the only way to fix me is to no, that that's not gonna yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. Like, I just can't yeah. be happy unless I find someone new to love. Right. Um. Of course, being, you know, being in a new relationship feels great to everybody and that's oh, yeah. perfectly good. But yeah. yeah, don't be like, I, I cannot be happy and unless I find someone to fill this hole. Yeah. yeah that's what she said. So, oh, um- God. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it like two seconds after I said it, I heard it. <laughs> All right. As for you mentioned uh, Dodgers and Padres, look, and thank you for taking to like my my one and only Padres game. Um, and I, I don't know if I went again, but anyway, uh, go Padres. They they I believe they knocked out the Dodgers, and so now they're in some type of tam- championship. I don't follow baseball, but apparently Padres are doing pretty <laughs> well. So yay Padres, go for them. Uh, good on them. <clears throat> and sad for Dodgers. Who are not doing so? Who apparently are now no longer doing a thing anyway. Sad Dodgers. All mm-hmm. right. Um. Let's. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. We might have some time. Okay. Uh, I I want to save the red flags thing for uh, uh another episode. So let's. Okay. We're gonna hold on to that. I want to just really quickly mention one thing. I, w- I want to get your opinion on something before we wrap this up. Okay. We have to do a bonus episode at some point anyway, not today, but we'll do a bonus episode sometime soon. So you guys can get another bonus episode. You guys deserve it for those who contribute to the Patreon. So thank you so much. One dollar at patreon.com slash aka the other guy. And you can listen to our bonus episodes where we talk about silly things, which I think actually the red flags thing is kind of funny and silly. So you'll, you'll, it does look like it kind of is. Yeah. So maybe we can do that in a bonus episode at some point. But anyway, real quick, I want to ask you a question. Okay. okay. I recently watched a video where well, – I, I, I want your opinion on it more than I want to ask you a question. So <clears throat> this woman went out to talk to a bunch of Zoomers, I guess they're called, Zoomers, um, whatever the, the youngest generation is, right? Yeah, um, I, I've heard that. Or Gen Z. Gen Z, okay. Uh, oh, college girls. So the, she, this woman went to a bunch of college, college girls and asked how much money – uh, their boyfriend or future husband needs to make in order to be in a relationship with them. My question to you is, what do mm-hmm. you think these college girls – now, mind you, college. So they have education. They have some intelligence. They have some knowledge. How much do you think they antis- expected their boyfriend slash husband to make in order for them to be in a relationship with them? God, where do they live in the country or what country? That's a good question. They're in the United States. Okay. I don't know what state they live in. I'm assuming California based on the way they're dressed because a lot of them oh. are in like like tank top, not tank tops, but like halter tops. Um, One of them was a skater. It mm-hmm. could be – just think of the coast. Think of either west okay. or east coast. But they're coast. It's yeah. definitely coastal. Well, then a lot. <laughs> I think a lot. Like, you just need a lot to be able to have a house. And if, you know, both of you make a lot of money, Mm -hmm. you might just, like, be able to have somewhere to live before you're 80. (laughs) So. Well, okay. True. But that's not what, that's not how they thought, though. Okay. So, 
of the, I would say, dozen and a half. Now, again, the way that they actually showed certain answers makes me think that they didn't exclude a lot of answers because they got the, the, the two answers that I really, really liked were one girl, and this is kind of in the comments. This was, I found this on Twitter. In the Twitter comments, they're like, this is the girl of whom everyone appreciated, right? Mm-hmm. It was a skater girl who was like 30,000. The guy could make 30,000 and I would be happy with him. It's like, it doesn't matter. Like, that's cool. That if that's all they make, I, I, I we're in love. So it doesn't matter to me. The, another mm-hmm. woman said that too. It's like, they don't have to make any money really. I don't care. I mean, I'm in love with them. I'm in a relationship with them as long as they can hold up their end. Right. Or I think that's what she said. I have to watch it again, but it's like, as long as they're able to like, you know, take care of things like whatever, they don't have to be rich. That was two people out of, again, two dozen. Okay. Every other girl was like, well, minimum 500,000 a year has to make it 500,000 a year. Otherwise, really not worth it. Or one was like a million. She can't, guy can't make less wow. than a million. <laughs> and these were legitimate answers. Like they weren't like, they weren't being tiki about it they weren't being you know coy or anything they were just like no if i'm gonna look for a man these are the amounts of money they have to make in order for me to want to even think about dating them like this is how much they have to make i feel like on the coast if he's making five hundred thousand and she makes five hundred thousand they're like no 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 they're almost middle class (laughs) they a lot of these, weirdly enough, uh, uh, some of the answers were like, well, no, because I want them to be able to take care of me. <laughs> I want them so to be able to like... So they want to be like a stay-at-home parent? They're, remember, they're wearing halter tops. <laughs> Believe it or not, even moms once wore halter tops. I'm just saying, uh, <laughs> based on a lot of the answers, it really felt that and I, 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 I kind of want to, I want you to watch to get your, to get, cause I'm throwing this on you without you having watched it, but you know, a lot of the answers were like really be, and the, the person who was interviewing them was like, really? <laughs> like she was kind of incredulous at the answers. Um, she felt like they well, were re- really out of, like, like really out there. Yeah. I mean, the, it sounds like you're talking about women who are marketing themselves like, just by the way they're dressed and that you think they're like California girls. I think so. Yeah. Probably put a lot into their looks and there's still a lot of attractive people out there who are like, Hey, I can find someone to take care of me. You know, I can find someone to give me what I want. And it's kind of like, um, when you think of like the cougars and the cubs and they usually find yeah. those, those young guys with the really great bodies and the, the women are usually a little bit more established and have their own house. They can kind of like let the guy come stay with them. You know, if you have really good looks, a lot of people are like, I'm just going to leverage that and I'm going to have high expectations because I know I am a hot ticket item. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I think it's interesting to kind of just get this. That that mentality of like, well, if I'm going to be with somebody, you know, no matter where you are, I mean, I I don't know. I want to feel I I, I don't know if this is again, you're right. You might be right. Maybe middle America or maybe like, I don't know, maybe northern America, like towards Canada. Maybe they're a little less interested in in six figure salaries. You know, right. They're just more interested in like, oh, well. Really expensive here, so. <laughs> it, it is. It is. No, you're not, you're not wrong. I mean, so it, you we, can't escape it. Yeah, but it's. It, it, I do find it funny-ish. I guess that we've escaped that mentality of like, oh well, you know, we'll make it work. You know, so if I'm in love with a person, we'll make it. We'll, we'll make it work. Now, I guess there's a practicality to it where it's like, well, no, there has to be. A lot of money involved, and the more the merrier, right? Like, it, uh, I, I don't know. I, I just it just it just interesting to me that 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 was kind of the expectation. The kind of the the, the regular answer was like, oh, this person has to make 
on average, three hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, a million dollars per year in order for me to even consider dating them, and it's like, wow. <laughs> well, yeah, like, that just I think blows my, my mind. I think my idea for these college girls, you said, mm-hmm. were were quite nicely dressed or dressed to impress, mm-hmm. um, is either they are like, look, I'm really attractive, and I can expect big things from people, and I'll get it yeah. because. You know, they want me over somebody else who won't expect that from them. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, they're also in college. So some of them might be thinking, well, I want to make a lot of money. I want my partner to make a lot of money. I don't want to have like a partner who's not making money. Right. And uh, maybe they don't want to be parents. Maybe they're like, I just want us to be both two working, really successful people and we have nice things and you know maybe we have kids but then we can afford to have help to like take care of them you know yeah yeah and they just want to be like i you know i'm in i'm here learning to get a good career i want to meet someone with a good career but i I bet you a lot of them are like hey look i'm i'm a gorgeous california girl or whatever and uh i got plenty of people on my ig like saying that they (laughs) give me anything i want so that's true i mean yeah, yeah like i said attractive people they just they live in a different world, you know, and yeah, there's no, always yeah, going to be sure. uh, an older gentleman or lady who's willing to bankroll their lifestyle. That's you're you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Uh, we were we were talking about that, weren't we? Were we talking about we like, did talk about age gaps, age gaps and stuff? Like, no, but weren't we talking about we talked about mail order brides for a little bit in the last episode or two yeah. episodes ago? Um, so. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it 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 it's funny to me, like, especially again the comments, the people who are just like incredulous to those answers, and they're like, well, I get well, some of them, like, well, I guess we're not the worst generation anymore <laughs> because it's like, yeah, <laughs> you know that expectation. The thing, though, it's like people are getting upset with these like young, pretty college girls thing, but like yeah. the vast majority of people are going to marry someone who doesn't make that much money. So no, that's true. It's like yeah. not that upsetting. I don't think that like these young kind of naive people who are used to probably getting what they want because it sounds like you kind of describe them as, you know, cute college girls. Um, yeah. uh, they they might not have the most realistic view of the world and all the moving parts that come with life and relationships. Yeah, I guess in college, you don't have that. You're too busy. I don't know partying or you're too busy you know socializing you're too busy doing all these other things where a lot of the stuff that you're doing is kind of already taken care of either through loans or through family or something right like yeah you know not everyone works while they're in college right like a lot of people just go to school and yeah you haven't really like fully gotten like the adulting experience yet and sometimes (laughs) i don't know sometimes when i hear that word like these days it's like ugh. It's um, considered more of a joke, the word, than anything else nowadays. It, yeah. it, it doesn't, it's not taken very seriously anymore. Not like it used to be. Yeah. I see it like an ad now, though now. And I'm like, Oh, do people still like say it like that? But yeah. Yeah. So they mm-hmm. probably, they just don't have, um, necessarily a really good idea of what they're really going to want and have to deal with later. Yeah. And they might not have. You know, when you're younger, you have idealized pictures of relationships and yeah. that stuff changes. It but, does. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they will get, maybe they will keep those, those things. They're like, I don't care what he's like, but he needs to make this much money. Maybe some people are like that. Yeah. Some people are like, I don't care what her personality is like. She needs to have this body and this number value of attractiveness and she can be like a psycho killer. I don't care. There's a lot of people who are very much like that. Yeah, they yeah. They, they are definitely very surface level. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up because I thought it was interesting. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll sh- maybe I'll give you the video so you can take a look at it because I found yeah. it, I found it fun. <laughs> sure. Um, but anyway, so there you go. Thanks everyone for listening. Happy spooky, spooky. Oh, uh, one last Halloween thing before we go, since it is the day of spookiness and scariness. Uh, give me, uh, what your favorite costume you've ever worn, um, for Halloween. Hmm. Or do you have one that, do you have a favorite costume you've ever worn for Halloween? Are you asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. Oh. <laughs> I, th- I thought they can, you were they saying. They can't answer me right now. So I thought you were saying, like, you. leave it in the comments or <laughs> <No>. something. 
<laughs> you can no. Please leave it in the comments and please email me what your favorite costumes were. But I'm asking. I'm also asking. What was Sarah. my favorite yeah. costume? Yeah. Favorite costume. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Did you dress um, up a lot during Halloween, even as you got older, or did you not? You not you at some point? Not just, a ton. Not, not a ton. I will okay. say, I had just like a store bought pirate costume. I liked once. It had. It had cool, like, freight, uh, I mean, flared sleeves and, like, oh. lacy, kind of, like, old-timey lacy flare sleeves, which is cool. I liked that. Was it a sexy pirate? <laughs> um, I guess so. It was, like, kind of, it was kind of a short skirt. It wasn't, like, the right. ridiculously sexy ones. You no. Know? It was, like... No. You weren't showing off your midriff or anything. No, it yeah. wasn't, like, the crazy ones that you see, but it was... You know, it was, it wasn't like a ball gown. It was mm. <laughs> a shorter skirt. So it was cute. I thought it was cute. Oh, that's good. That's a good costume. What about uh, you? My, my favorite would have to be my, my girlfriend at the time made me a Jedi costume, like by cool. hand. We went to Joanne's Fabrics and bought all the materials and she sewed and cut and all that stuff. Cause I was collecting lightsabers at the time. And yeah, I, w- I went around with her and her uh, younger sister out trick or treating, and I was oh, in a nice. fancy yeah, I was in a fancy costume she made. It was really well done. I I, I thought uh, best costume I've ever worn, best costume I've ever had the pleasure of uh, of showing off. Sadly, it was only for that one night. Never wore it again after that. Oh, like a but wedding dress. <laughs> kind of like a wedding dress. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Though a lot less expensive. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know how much wedding dress yeah. costs. Oh my god, <laughs> crazy! Yeah, but yeah. Mm. But look, I mean, ugh, weddings are expensive. I don't know why people do it. <laughs> just get eloped. Yeah. Be like Jennifer Lopez and and uh, Ben Affleck, and just go to Vegas and get eloped. Um, they did it right. Even though they're like wealthy millionaires, they could have easily bought a fancy wedding. They just they get went. a lot of a lot of press though maybe they didn't want to deal with all that that's true that's a good point anyway if you want press we'll press you all over the place with our <laughs> with our love uh by you guys sending us questions at is this love pod at gmail.com or is this love pod on twitter instagram and facebook you can also uh follow sarah at sarah nade dot and dot pete on instagram <laughs> I'm at AKA the other guy on Instagram and Facebook. I mean, Facebook, uh, Instagram and Twitter. And you can, uh, review. Just all we ask for the spooky day. Be scary and spooky and give us a five star review on all of the platforms because those reviews let other people know that we exist and also say, Hey, this is a show worth listening to because we got spooky and weird and crazy. Ooh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> And there you go. <laughs> That's it. <clears throat> My voice is going away, so please, please, please uh, send us your questions. And thank you every very much for listening and hanging out with us on Halloween, uh, the week, the Friday before Halloween. Thanks, everyone, listening. Thanks for hanging out. Go enjoy some candy. Go get some fancy costumes. Go to that party dressed in your sexy um, jelly bean costume or whatever. <laughs> and, <laughs> and have some fun. You're, the sexy sour gummy costume that you, Ooh, that you I bought. Oh, I like that. Yeah. There you go. You got Sarah's attention. That's for, I mean, Spooky's attention. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we will talk to you all next time. So don't forget to love that. No, you know what? Don't forget to hate. This is the only time I'll ever say hate. Don't forget to hate that candy corn. Ugh. Worst candy ever. Candy corn. (laughs) All right. Bye, everyone. (laughs) 